Good afternoon, everybody. What's up, man? It's your boy Chance. I uh, just thought I'd pop in, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday afternoon. You know, middle of the week, figured I'd pop in and say what's up. But um, there is a question I would like to answer that I actually get quite a bit of. And this may serve as an explanation as to why I take you know, racing in game as serious as I do. Um, as well as, you know, why I take racing in general very serious. And, like, why I put so much time and effort into it. And why I do it. And why it's actually so important to me. Um, for me, racing isn't just a sport. For me, it's like I live by this philosophy, and it's completely true. Whether in game or in real life, racing is racing. Plain and simple. We're all behind the wheel. We're all doing our thing. But the reason I race is more than just for the fact that I enjoy it. You see, back in 2000, my older brother got me into the Fast and Furious movies. He introduced the first one to me. And that's kind of what kick-started everything for me. You know, after the first one, I was like, okay, how can I do this? You know, like, I'm really into this. Like, I'm really enjoying this. This is really cool. And, you know, later on after that, I picked up um, Too Fast, Too Furious, which is around the time that um, that Gran Turismo had came out. So I was playing a lot of Gran Turismo, you know, back in the day. But that was on my cousin's piece. That was like here and there. And I thought it was just a regular weird racing game. But what I didn't know is that there was an entire culture built around this scene. And I didn't find that out fully until I had picked up Underground 2 for the Nintendo GameCube, which is like my first true, you know, street racing style game. And through that, I found that there was a whole other world. And, you know, ever since then, you know, I've been practicing, you know, through Need for Speed Carbon. Um, definitely a lot on Need for Speed Pro Street. Um, Underground 1. You know, Most Wanted, The Run. Um, even on games such as Real Racing, the Real Racing games like Real Racing 3. Uh, I've been practicing a lot on Osaluto Racing. But it wasn't until Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift that I found my true talent and my true passion, which is drift racing. Like my brothers Ethan and Ricardo, that's what got me into the whole drift scene. Yes, I was into the racing scene in general. But I had no idea about drifting. I thought I was just throwing my car sideways on Underground 2 having fun. Didn't think anything of it. Come to find out there's a whole subculture built around this style of racing. And, you know, over time I practiced and got better. And it was ultimately through them, through my brothers Ethan and, R Ethan and Ricardo, that I got as good as I am today with drifting. Because let me tell you something, Ethan was hard as hell on me. Let me tell you, he was like, dude, more angle, go faster, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong. And I hated it, but it ultimately made me a better driver. It made me better at what I do. So the reason I race isn't just for the enjoyment, it's because it's part of me. I race for my brothers. 
I raced for my brothers, Ethan and Ricardo, but more importantly, I raced for my older brother who passed away in 2016, who was responsible for my entire, you know, me doing what I do with racing. He's the one responsible for that. So I raced for a lot more than people realize. Because through racing, that's how me and my brother bonded. That's how we became as close as we were. See, my older brother, like myself, he was he was a gearhead, man. He loved cars. We would always go to car shows when I was little and just and have fun. So I grew up around cars. You know, I grew up watching NASCAR as a kid. You know, I grew up in the era of, you know, the King Richard Petty um, and shortly after the Intimidator, also known as Dale Earnhardt Sr., and now, you know, now that Junior's retired, his nephew's racing. I grew up in that era, just before street racing became big. So, you know, racing is basically, it's in my blood, basically. So, you know, like, I race for a lot bigger reasons than most seem to get. My older brother is the one that really got me into it. And after that, I just kind of, you know, learned on my own. And, you know, and just thanks to the teaching of two of my best friends that, you know, I became as skilled as I am. And that's where you're wrong, Mason. My brother has everything to do with it. If it wasn't for my older brother, I would not know about the racing scene that's out there today. Because let me tell you something, dude. If it wasn't for my older brother showing me what it means to be a true driver, whether in-game or in real life, I would not be here right now. So I'm racing for a lot more than you realize, pal. A lot more. He's one of the biggest fucking reasons that I race. Because let me tell you something, man. Let me fucking tell you something right now, dude. That man, my older brother, who got me into racing, he pushed me as hard as he could. To be the best that I could when I first started out way back when. So I owe my entire fucking career as a racing style gamer to him. And to my brothers Ethan and Ricardo pushing me to do better. If it wasn't for those three people bro. I would not be sitting here right now doing what I do best. I would not have broken the world record on Underground 2 if it wasn't for the three of them. I wouldn't even know about the racing scene at all if it wasn't for that. So yes, I owe everything to my older brother and my brothers Ethan and Ricardo. I owe everything to those guys. So don't sit there and say they ain't got nothing to do with it. Because guess what, bro? They've got everything to fucking do with it. And it's like I told you earlier, man. Leave the bullshit on the track. Drive with your fucking car, not your mouth. Let your car do the talking and stop running your fucking mouth. It's like the same, man. Run your car, not your mouth. You don't know my backstory. You don't know where the fuck I came from and the hell I went through growing up just to get to where I'm at. So honestly, man, you need to keep your mouth shut and let your car do the talking instead of running your fucking mouth like a little fucking coward when you don't even fucking know me. You don't know what life was like for me growing up, and you sure don't know how good I really am. Because like I told you earlier, man, you underestimate me. You're underestimating me thinking that you could just flat out beat me. 
And whether that's true or not, we'll find out today. But when it comes down to it, racing is racing. We all have our reasons. We're all in the same fucking boat. And that's something that you need to fucking learn. You need to learn that at the end of the day, you're just another fucking driver that I'm going to fucking pass up. If you think I'm fucking joking, dude, try me. I'm one of the fastest on my team. I'm the second fastest driver. And I've proved it time and time again. Because let me tell you something, dude. I can push cars to the limits that not even you would be able to touch. All right? You give me on Need for Speed Pro Street, which is the most realistic simulator on the Nintendo Wii, and I'll blow it right by your ass. I'm setting records on there that most can't even touch. All right? I built my rep for a reason. I built it for my brothers. I built it to make a living off of what I love to do, which is racing style gaming. All right. I've gained a really good ground and a really good reputation within the car community and within the racing community in general. And it's motherfuckers like you that think they're all that. That think that just because you got experience that you know everything. Dude, experience and racing don't mean shit. You can have all the experience in the world and still get passed up by a rookie. Trust me, I know. I've had it happen. So like I said, dude, stop underestimating your opponents. And stop acting fucking cocky, dude. You need to be fucking humble. Yeah, I'm not judging your driving because I don't know how you drive. I've never seen you race. But when you come at me saying that my brother has nothing to do with my racing, my older brother has everything to do with my racing. My brothers Ethan and Ricardo have everything to do with my racing. Because they're the three that pushed me to get to the point of where I'm at. Because they believed in me. They saw what I was capable of doing. And guess what? They brought out they brought out the best of me and made me the best fucking driver that I can be. So before you go fucking judging anyone, Mason, and opening your fucking mouth, you need to shut your mouth and open your fucking ears. And that's what's wrong with a lot of racers like you, Mason. You're quick to judge instead of opening your ears. You're quick to, you know, run your mouth when you know nothing. I'm not claiming to be the best in the world. I know there's somebody out there faster than me. And whether it's you or somebody else down the road, it don't matter. Being the best in the, in the world isn't my goal. That's not the end goal for me. The end goal for me is continuing to live my life as a racing style gamer and carrying on the legacy of my older brother and my brothers Ethan and Ricardo alongside them. See, you might not have a reason to race. You might do it just because you enjoy it. I don't know. But at the end of the day, man, we're all racers. We all have our reasons. Some of us have bigger reasons than most. Like myself, I raced for my older brother that passed away from lung cancer and pneumonia combined two years ago. It's because of him that I got into car culture. It's because of him that I'm at where I'm at today. I owe my entire career and the start of my career to my older brother. You can ask anyone that knows my family personally. They'll all tell you the same damn thing. 
My older brother is what got me here. And like I said, whether you're faster or not, I can't say yet. But even if you are faster, that don't mean shit. What means something is the fact that you, whether I win or lose today, I don't care either way. I really don't. Win or lose, at the end of the day, I'm still going to be me and I'm still going to be the racer that I've always been. Because one lesson I've learned, dude, especially within the racing community like we're doing, man, you got to be humble. You can't just up and judge people like that. Because there's a dude out there that may have a fucking shitty 8.6 and blow right by you. And not bagging on 8.6s, man. Fucking love 8.6s. I fucking drift them bitches all fucking day long. But my point is, dude, somebody can have a jumped out car and blow right by you. And you wouldn't be able to do anything to stop them. Like I said, dude, it's not about the car. It's about the driver. So before you go underestimating another opponent, thinking that you can up and beat them, you might want to take a look in the mirror first. Because at the end of the day, you're just another driver, and so am I. And I'll be honest with you, man. I enjoy the competition. I really do. I enjoy it. I fucking love the competition. And, you know, whether you're in the circuit, whether you're in the sprint, whether you're in the drift, drag, you know, time attack, whatever you're into, it doesn't matter. Racing is racing at the end of the day. Nobody is above anyone in the car community. But when it comes to competition, yeah, you're going to have that bit of a rivalry. And like I said, I welcome rivalry. I welcome competition. And like I told you earlier, man, I've been known to surprise people when it comes to my driving skill. I've been known to surprise a lot of people. Why do you think I've been begging to get up on the fucking pro level for years now, man? I've been stuck down at the amateur level for fucking years. I enjoy the challenge. I enjoy the competition. And like I said, whether you're better than me at the end of the day, I don't care. Whether you're better than me or not at driving, I give zero fucks. What I care about is racing in general. What I care about is upholding my brother's legacy and what he left behind for me to carry on. That's what racing is about for me. It's about just the purpose because if you have no purpose in racing, if you're doing it just to do it to prove that you know, you're faster, then you're in the wrong field. If you race just to prove that you're the best, and you don't actually have something that you're going for or you're racing for, then what are you even doing on the track? These are questions I ask myself every day. Why do I race? What's my purpose? Why do I do this? Is it to be the best or is it to uphold a legacy of three amazing fucking people that I am proud to have in my life. Am I racing for myself or am I racing for something bigger? These are questions that you need to ask yourself, especially you, Mason. These are questions you need to ask yourself every day. Why do you do it? 
do you race just to be the best in the world like everybody else? Or do you race for a bigger purpose? Do you race for your friends, for your family? Do you race to uphold their legacy? Do you race to uphold what they left for you to carry on? Do you race for your family? Do you race to make a better life for yourself? Or do you race to, you know, escape the bad times? And these are questions you need to ask yourself, Mason. These are the same questions I ask myself every day. And that is ultimately what makes me a good driver because I ask myself these questions daily. You know, why do I do this? What's my reason for this? And then I look back on the legacy that my older brother left for me. And I realized that he saw something in me. He knew that I would be a great gaming style driver one day. And here I am, several years later, after busting my ass for years on end, practicing every day, 24-7 on very little sleep. And to get that hard work and the pushing of my brothers, Ethan and Ricardo, and them getting on my ass every five seconds, that I became the driver that I am today. Yes, my older brother, I owe everything to him for getting me into it. I owe everything to him for the start of my career. But I also owe my brothers, Ethan and Ricardo, getting on my ass and pushing me to the limits and beyond what I was capable of to me being the best driver that I am today. Every day I push to be better because of them. And I hope you take this as a lesson, Mason. It's nothing personal against you. It's not you as a person. It's your attitude. If you don't change your attitude, and start asking yourself the questions that I ask myself daily, then what are you even doing on the track? That's ultimately what makes you a good driver, is the fact that you stay humble and you respect one another at the end of the day. Whether you're racing to be pro whether you're racing to, you know, be the best or whether you have a bigger reason like myself. You need to ask yourself those questions, man. Otherwise, you're just giving another driver that's lost in the wind, not knowing what he's doing, not knowing where he's headed. Let me tell you something, dude. I've been racing since I was 16 years old and I'm 28 now. I've been racing longer than most have been alive within the racing community. I've been doing racing style gaming longer than most. And let me tell you something. I can honestly say that I'm proud to be a racer. I'm proud to be a part of the team that I'm on. And I'm proud to uphold the legacy that I uphold every day. And at the end of the day, it isn't just about driving. Racing isn't just about driving. It's a way of life. You have to live that shit. You have to breathe that shit. You have to eat that shit every fucking day. You have to eat, sleep, and breathe racing every day. And that's what I do. When I'm not working on my music career and doing my job as a music artist, I'm usually busting ass doing what I'm best at, practicing, training, every day, nonstop, day and night. So unless you do that, man, you're not going to get anywhere fast. 
So like I said, man, take this as a lesson. Not anything personal against you, but take this as a lesson. You know, sit back and really ask yourself why you do it. Why you race. What's your purpose? Why did you begin this journey? And once you can answer that question, and once you start practicing every day and night nonstop, then come to me about racing. Yeah, you got the ambition. I can see that. But the question is, do you have the heart? Do you have a true purpose and a reason for racing? You need to ask yourself that. So I'd say what? Once you can answer those two questions, why you do it and what you race for, then I'll face you. Until then, you're not worth my time, Mason, because you don't have the heart of a true racer. So like I said, come back when you figured that out. And maybe then I'll take you on.